Hey guys, Jim Mertz here and welcome back to the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks podcast. This is episode 70, 70, Seven think zero. about that, Seven zero. 70 episodes. That's like what 70 people with one episode do. It's like we've done 70 people's podcasts. That's like one podcast a week for 70 weeks. That's, that's pretty <laughs> That's impressive. pretty much what it is. <laughs> That's exactly. So last episode, yeah. And last episode, I ambushed you. So I expect no better treatment from you this week. Do you have an ambush question for yes. me? Or I actually we, have two oh. of them, but I'm going to frame it in a unique way because okay. know, this is all about sales copying, right? Copywriting. Um, yes, it is. And I want, want people to realize, you know, just because you have a business that sells something that you may not think everybody needs, you know, but people have needs, people want things, they don't have to necessarily need them. But, you know, when you sell something that, for instance, these, these, these two, I'm going to throw at you, one is a pest control company, and the other one sells irrigation systems. All right, okay, pretty you know, specific products and services going on to, you know, yeah, it's not something that I really look forward to buying, right? But, you know, if you, if you, if you sell it right, you can actually have, huh, that makes a lot of sense. Maybe I will pull the sure. trigger on that pest control, right? Oh, yeah. Pest control is going to be easier to sell yeah. than, than Wi-Fi controlled irrigation system. Sure. But also the other one could be pretty easy to sell if you're going after rich people with nice lawns near golf courses where they have all of their ego and their status is tied up in how their lawn looks. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty so. of business out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so you just got to sell it to the right person. So it, let, let me... Um, let me just tell you the two emails we got. We got one email from um, someone in the pest control business says, how do I make sales copy talk to people that want to buy pest control treatments? I know it's fear of the pests or fear of damage, you know, when it comes to property like termite damage. Um, but I always end up wishy-washy with the copy and it doesn't really sell for him. So, you know, what should he do? So, uh, I think you're right. It's there's it's all a fear based thing. It, it's fear of the of the pests. And it's also fear of damage. Now I'm going to tell you a story. And this is an absolutely 100% true, which makes this even nastier. Okay. okay? Um, mm. And that is, when I was in college, I lived in the fraternity house for three years. I mean, and it was nasty. And I woke up I my imagine. senior year, the first night back, I woke up at two in the morning and I had a roach on my chest that I'm not lying to you. It was one of those water bugs that's like three inches, four inches long. And it was standing on my chest. And I woke up and I'm, I'll admit, I screamed. <laughs> and like brush the thing off and then stomped on it and stuff. And that has given me just an irrational fear of roaches um, that to this day, it sticks with me. So my, my point is that you got a little squeamish just at that. Oh, just, I imagine. Mean, imagine it, yeah. just imagine. I mean, I woke up and that thing was looking at me, literally was looking at me. It was one of them flying things. Ooh. So the point I had this happen to me another time. I lived, this is when I lived in the trailer park and the trailer park was on a community well. And a community well is gonna draw water bugs. There's no, there's just absolutely no way around it. Mm -hmm. So I was working at home. I had a, a um, uh, this is back before we used Keurig stuff. We had a Mr. Coffee, you know, you'd make a pot of coffee. I don't sure. know if people still do that anymore, but um, I had drunk the whole pot of coffee and was on the last cup and I poured the last cup into my cup and a water bug that big 
poured out of the coffee thing, out of the coffee jug into my cup. Yeah, that's pretty gross. And I, I probably quit drinking coffee at that point. That <laughs> just, yeah, I didn't finish that cup. Yeah. Um, those two stories telling a story of an encounter with a specific pest makes it real that people want to get rid of it. So you got to paint a better picture than, hey, we do pest control. Don't you want to not deal with pests? Yeah. Number one, I would mention, no, no, seriously. Yeah. I mean, what, yeah. what, which pest? Fire ants. You know, if you're in Florida, fire ants can kill a baby. Did you know that fire ants can kill a baby? Yeah, those aren't fun, man. Did you know that roaches spread disease and, and blah, blah, blah? Imagine waking up in the middle of the night, going to check on your baby and finding a roach on your kid. Imagine rolling over to look at your spouse and seeing a roach on their cheek. That's what pest control does. It saves you from horrifying scenes. Now, again, people, oh, Jim, would you really go over the top with that? Yes, I would. I personally would. If I owned a pest control company, I would have the most chilling tales from the crypt looking ads running where people were screaming and running like an old horror film. And here I come like Ghostbusters to save the day. Um, so I think that the, the two big thing is use stories, use gross pictures use specific pests and then also give have case studies where people again over on to the so that's the fear but then the damage one would be using case studies of where people got hosed for big time big time damage and you know that could have been prevented if they'd have been on a yearly inspection type plan i mean i've had termites before yeah that sucks, show, sucks. show some termite damage you yeah know? And, and all those and little show, things flying around and yeah when they all spawn at that one time yeah and they're you know you see a swarm of termites that's nothing but dollar bills flying away that's causing you to just reevaluate life man i mean that's <laughs> dollar bills are just flying at hundred dollar bills man and so that's you you got to paint the picture for people um so that that's my number one gut reaction to to that he's watering it down because he's trying to not hurt people's feelings or he's trying to be too inclusive i'd have one ad for roaches one ad for rat do you have rats do you have vermin are you worried that you're did you know in the 1800s that children used to be eaten by rats they got so big Ugh. i mean <laughs> it's true so i mean i i would really isolate by group rats Whatever the main groups are, rats, yeah, and snakes, it could be regional too. You know, if you have a you have a pest control company scorpions. In, the, in the south or the west, you know, you're going to have different critters that uh, play. Yeah, yeah, hopefully deadly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, snakes. you grew up in Florida. What was Man. the big thing everybody was scared of? What kind of snake? Coral snake, right? I mean, all snakes. I mean, there wasn't a snake we didn't have. You know, right. I mean, but what I'm saying is the coral snake is coral snake so it's deadly. like we get rid of snakes, including the deadly coral snake, yeah. which can be you, you see what I mean? It's you know, we get rid of all of this, but we also get rid of the one that'll kill you. Yeah. That'll ruin your yeah, marriage. Course, that'll eat your kid. So always like uh, water moccasins. Yeah, those things were yeah. everywhere. Those will get if you. it rained, you know, they'd come out into the neighborhood and hang out and whew. Yeah. Yeah. Alligators. Yep. So, oh, yeah. I mean, again, what's a, what's a pest? Even like here, we got groundhogs. Groundhogs are terrible pests around where I am here. They can screw up your foundation in no time oh, yeah. by burrowing under and, and causing your foundation to crack. Don't let this cute little creature turn into a $50,000 repair bill. Call us. We'll kill the thing with extreme prejudice, but you <laughs> won't have to see the bloodshed. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's some good. You know? Yeah. You like know, said, I mean, that copy made me laugh. Be... It took a, it took an emotion. It took dollar bills and it made me laugh. You know, I've always said, I spoke in front of a group of inventors one time. And at the time we, we had an older house over in Williamsburg. And again, when you live near the woods and you're in an older house, no matter what you do, 
you're going to get a mouse. Every once in a while, oh, yeah. a mouse is going to come from the woods, come into your house in the winter, and it's nice and warm. Mm -hmm. So my wife got these humane mouse traps, which basically meant that it's a tube that you bait the thing into, and then it hits something, and then the end folds up, and then you're supposed to go dispose of it humanely out in the woods, and it might get loose, or you let it loose. And so all it might not night, come back. <laughs> I listened to this thing gnawing on this trap, gnawing mm. on it, and squeaking, and making this noise, and all I could think of was, won't you just die? And it wouldn't because it was half caught in there. Ooh. So I was talking to these inventors and I said, you all think that the key is to invent a better mousetrap. And the answer is not a better mousetrap, it's a mousetrap that kills the mouse quickly and your job is to advertise the fact that you killed the mouse with extreme prejudice. <laughs> And, and some of them got it and some of them didn't, but it's true. That's the point of your advertising and your marketing is to explain that you solve the problem. You're the hero. You come riding in and take care of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. there you go. I mean, I'd, if I had a pessimist, I'd pay money I'd, I'd, to I'd, do that. Absolutely. Oh my God. I'm not going to touch that nasty crap. Mm -hmm. Now the stuff outside I will take care of. I'll pop. But then again, I popped a skunk with a 22 mm. and I didn't get a headshot on him and he shot his load and then I unloaded in him, man. I shot him 30 times. I was like, screw you, dude. You have just screwed my life. You're going to die. And I, mean, I messed up one of those have a heart traps because I was shooting him so much. It was, it messed up the wire. God, that pissed me off. But <laughs> next time we had a problem, I didn't try and solve it. I called the pest control company and they came and trapped him and then they went and got him and their guy got hit. So there you go. that so was you, worth you, 300 you definitely bucks. Wanna, you definitely want to outsource a skunk hit. Yes. Yes, so. absolutely. So what, I, have, what wizard, I didn't realize what I had all these, I didn't realize wizard, I had all these think? pest control stories. Yeah, me, me too. We all have them. That's why I think they resonate. I don't think it's going to be wishy-washy if you, you hit them with some emotion, right? And yeah. creepiness. Skunks, bats, possums, yeah. cats. Everybody has a little critter story that yep. gave them the creeps. So, the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. So what, uh, what wizard would you say would be a good one for someone in the pest control business? I know you can do multiple, but – you know, one that kind of really establishes that fear factor. I, well, okay. So I think two of them that I would suggest, I don't know. We don't really, I don't really going to demo right now right? or just, anything, just but, but, but I would say the, what I do in one sentence wizard mm. would be one, because that would be the one to, to tell people, you know, I help homeowners just like you get rid of rats, bats, mice, and ants. And so you don't have to get your fingers into dirty chemicals or blah, blah, blah. I mean, just, I would, I would say it not a, you know, one of these corporate -y things. I mean, I would get my hands dirty. Okay. With, with like, we take care of the nasty, dirty, yucky pest problems. So you don't have, so you can sleep safely at night with you and your kids can sleep safely at night and not worry about strange noises in the walls. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. that's a good one. And then, like I said, you can mix it in with, you know, the and, dollar bills that you had a minute ago. That was, that was clever, by the way. With the dollars thank you. flying around know. when you see the swarm of termites, those are just hundred dollar yep. bills flying in the air in your basement. They really are. <laughs> and then the hidden persuasion wizard would be the one where I would really get into people's heads. I like Where that. it's, it's, it's like, you know, you're, you're down in the fears and the other stuff. And then what you also have to do is promise a, a fast resolution. It's, it's like, call us and, and it's as good as fixed. Call us and yeah. that, pet, that pest is as good as dead or the doornail in, on a freeway. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll make roadkill in your driveway. If you want us to take revenge on that pest for you in your driveway, we'll do it. We've got big dually trucks. We will, we will take care of it. 
And now I know that I'm offending some people, but since I adopted my no cussing policy on videos, I need to find new ways to annoy people. So I don't apologize. However, if you are in a place where humane treatment of the pest is a big deal, then you can take the other tack, yep. which is we respectfully and humanely help you handle your pest problems. We use live traps. Um, we never harm the animals in front of you. Um, and <laughs> You never know. I mean, it, it may be a percentage of your sales that it could be that. it. Yeah. You know, humane traps be. available for an extra charge. Oh, there you, you know, go. humane. <laughs> give the humane option. Think Up, it so we won't kill Up, it. Upsell your, your, your uh, the ultimate upsell is you can kill it. We'll hold it while you kill it. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. Um, he shouldn't laugh. Just encourages me. So um, I think we've handled the pest one enough. Yeah, I like the hidden persuasion wizard idea. That, that's a good yeah. one. Okay, so here's another one. Um, the gentleman has a uh, <clears throat> irrigation sprinkler system business, and he's really trying to plug Wi-Fi controlled irrigation sprinkler system on a timer. And he okay. says, you know, here, here's the good thing about it is it saves money, it saves water, and it pays for itself in a few years. Okay. And I said, that's like, I mean, you already got most of your sales copy right there. You know, now let's let's put it into, uh, you know, a you know, unique fashion that I would. That's actually, you know, say. That's actually Jim, decent. He that's that's actually decent copy right there. The, I mean, yeah, that's that, the, the big thing he needs a hook. You need some kind of a hook that, um, you know, again, it all starts with the target audience, though. I mean, who's your target audience? And in my opinion, the target audience is more, well, I don't know what the price point is on it, but the kind of person who has a lawn sprinkler system, who has a lawn that they would be worried about having a Wi-Fi controller for it and other stuff is probably, at least initially, I would be going after more well-to-do people, people in gated communities, people in golf course communities, people in planned unit developments, and people where there are significant homeowner associations. Yep where they're, they're really keeping a tight control over people's appearance and prop, you know, and stuff. In other words, nowhere close to where I live. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My grass is green. <laughs> yeah. Multiple yeah. mixes That's, of whatever's out there. Sometimes yeah, there's flowers for, that pop up too. In the yeah. Room. Well, they're pretty. You can yeah. clip them and give them to your wife. And I mow it as green. I, yeah. I, we have volunteer grass, whatever grass volunteers to grow. That's the grass we have, man. If there wasn't for crab grass, I'd have no grass. <laughs> so my point, though, is that if you understand who the audience is, then you can start hitting their hot buttons. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these people are probably also, depending on the part of the country, there may be drought restrictions. Yeah. There may be things where this could help somebody to water their lawn and still be within drought restriction stuff or, or keep them below whatever the meter limits are for your, your house or, or you see what I mean? So there's, oh, yeah. it's knowing what you're going after and who you're going after and where they are is a big thing. Cause that'll start giving you the hot buttons to put into, especially your headline. I mean, face it. Sometimes you just, you just lose track of the day. And you're like, oh man, I forgot to water the grass, you know. Dude, I've done that for the last twenty years. <laughs> well, I've never I'm remembered just, to water the grass. Some people, some people, okay, whether it's where it's flowers. So you know, if you spend a lot of money on um, sod, you know, you've just redone your yard. You know, what I would probably do is I would get in with some landscaping folks and work with them to say, hey, next time you offer somebody to do sod. Um, we'll put, we'll come in and put the irrigation system in there and then we'll upsell the yeah. uh, Wi-Fi controlled irrigation system. Because I guarantee you, if you got sod, you're going to be watering it a lot. And if you have a system yes. to support that, it's going to be a lot easier on you. you know, especially well, and you could also and add those bigger, bigger 
um, places like someone who's going to spend money on true, what are they, is it true green lawn, you know, those national lawn care things. Right. Yeah. You could target them with your advertising potentially, you yeah. know, if people put in those keywords, then you can come up and your oh, ads yeah. can show up. Um, if they have a presence on social media, I don't know if they do or don't, but you could target them if they're big enough. There's, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do by realizing, okay, where are people? But I think you've already got the, the, the germs of what you need to be able to create some great copy. And, and I really would, me personally, I would start with the Gary Halbert, um, Gary Halbert's favorite direct response headline wizard that's in um, the Jim Edwards Method Premium because that's going to maybe give you some sizzle. Mm. And I would target some more well-to-do, well-heeled people, you know, and, and ending up with, with, you know, I don't know, do we want to, I don't think we really have time for it, but that would be the one I would go after. You're, you're looking for, um, you know, something where you're just, it, it's got that sizzle, it's got that pop, you know, um, Are you on that, that would page be the place now? I would. Yeah, I'm on it, but I loaded a different one just looking for some, you know, don't right. envy the neighbor with the beautiful lawn be one. Um, let's see. How to beat. Oh, how to beat the who's the person that takes. Oh, how to beat the golf course greenskeepers at their own game. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That doesn't suck, right? Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of a thing. I'm like, what it, whoa, wait a minute. You know, how to beat the golf course greenskeepers at their own game. Use this Wi-Fi controlled um, sprinkler system to have lush, beautiful green lawn without the staff. You know, something like that. I mean, that's a prestige thing. Sure. Where, you know, I've bought plenty of stuff so that I would feel cool. I'm sure people looked at me and thought, what a jackalope. Why would anybody do that? You know, it's like when you're driving around the rolls, people look at you like, mm, I bet he's a jerk. And you know, depending on the day, you're right. Just not today. Um, so that would be the one I would play with first, honestly. Just like to see. One. And we've got Gary a bunch Halbert's, of other headline ones in there. What's it called? Gary Halbert's? The Gary Halbert's favorite direct response headlines. Direct response 84 headline. of them. Okay. Wow. So that would be the one I would play with, but really it's the hook. It's, it's the hook. And I think any kind of advertising that you're doing in marketing very, very quickly in whatever you're doing needs to have some sort of an image of a lawn that just would even make me go, dang, that's a nice lawn. If I cared about my grass, I'd want my grass to look like that. Yeah. I don't and care I probably about have an grass. irrigation system to go with it. Oh yeah. That guy's got an irrigation system, obviously. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the kind of, now I don't, you know, yeah. my irrigation system is I depend on the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. Um, yeah, same. So <laughs> there you go. Oh good. The grass died. Now we don't have to yeah. mow it. That's yeah. the best. Yeah. Best we haven't summer had rain ever. in 30 days. That means I haven't <laughs> mowed the grass four times. <laughs> that's right. Woohoo. <laughs> So obviously we're not your target market. Yes, but, but there are people that are specifically wanting the perfect lawn and yeah. perfect irrigation system, whether it's, you know, they tie an irrigation system to their little farm that they have in the backyard, you know, that, that's really smart too, you know, so it doesn't well, have to be grass either. So you Gardeners, can, yeah. yeah, with a drip gardeners. system or something, yep. yeah. And that is something that we have done experimented with and, and having drips free feed systems. And that was a pain to go have, go out and go out and turn the thing on and do yeah. all that other stuff. So, yeah. so that, yeah, there I are like other it. options too, besides the people with the pretty lawns, people who Absolutely. are actually making use of their, you know, acreage is, uh, is another opportunity for you too. I well, I'm making use of mine. I graveled it and piled up a bunch of dirt and I shoot lead into it. I mean, that's, that's very, a lot of people would love to have my yards too. I like your yard. <laughs> nice playground in it. Everything. You, playground. Apart. Well, you know, playground. Tactical that's a combat assault. condition, combat conditioning course. <laughs> that's what you called it. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I want to point something out interesting. This is, I think we have stumbled across, we're not stumbled, but we have, we have brought to the surface a principle that I want to bring to everybody's attention. One of the things we always or often talk about is one of the, the key principles in copywriting is um, sell what it does, not what it is. You know, there focus you on what it does, not what it is. And another thing that we have just demonstrated is that you really can't start talking mm -hmm. about your copywriting until you get very clear on who your avatar is. And once you're clear on who your avatar is, then it makes it much easier and much more natural to be able to create the content and the copy that you want. In other words, if you're not clear on the avatar, you're just mm -hmm. taking stabs in the dark. That's true. But once you're clear on that avatar, who, then the copy flows from that. So it, it all starts with the who, not the what or the how. Yeah, and Jim mentioned it too. You know, he's also not only trying to write the good copy for it, but he's also trying to find the place where that copy will do best, whether right. that is following the hashtags of landscaping businesses or, you know, whatever, um, you know, other social media sites and websites and that, you know, that are popular, you know, out there as well that you can, you know, groups, you know, I'm sure there's lawn groups on Facebook. You know, <laughs> so oh, I bet you there are. Yeah. Sure, <clears throat> sure. Yeah. yeah, so I would, I would bet money that there are groups on Facebook organized around having a beautiful lawn. Absolutely. So cool. Yeah, you could find All it. All righty. Well, I think that does it for episode seventy, Stu. Yes, sir. Any final thoughts? No, I, I'd just say you know thanks for um, for listening. But also, you know, check out the Sales Copy Content Marketing Hacks uh, closed Facebook group and, um, you know, get in there. What are you, close to 15,000 now? Jim? We're up over 15,000. Over 15,000. Yeah. So there's a yeah. lot of great people in there that are very um, helpful with uh, giving you feedback on any sales copy that you may have. And, you know, give it a shot. Try the Jim Edwards method. Premium. Com. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, everybody have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye everybody.